Hello everybody, welcome back to this week's live. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Sarah Krajewski and we are going to be joined by Coach T. Now if any of y'all have followed Coach T or followed her stuff, she's amazing and the most exciting thing about her is, <gasps> she's right here! <laughs> it's real! So this is the magic of Instagram friendship is that she's like one of my best friends and she came to visit me in Wisconsin. So we're gonna do IG Live like this today, and you get to talk to both of us, and I have some fun things I'm gonna ask Caitlin, and some fun things that you guys can ask her too, but she's gonna be right here. I'm right here. This is amazing. So it's really cool to like connect with art teachers and do all that fun stuff, but for everybody that's joining us today, go ahead and pop in a couple emojis about where y'all are from, all of those fun things, um, but we're gonna be talking about how to get strong, how to stay strong, and what this crazy girl's year has looked like, because I don't know about you, but art teachers have had insane years. Everybody's been having a really crazy year, and it's no different for you. So, Caitlin, take it away. Tell us a little bit about, like, who are you? Where do you teach? What was your year like? Like, tell us about how crazy it was. Who am I? Who, am I? who are we all? <laughs> really? I am Caitlin, Caitlin Thompson, Coach T, because it's fun. I didn't feel like a Mrs. Thompson. No, you're a coach. Mrs. Thompson. <laughs> no, I'm Coach T. Um, I live in Little Rhode Island. Any Rhode Islanders out there? Maybe one or two? There's only one or two of us, so... Yeah, uh, but I teach in a small little suburb outside of uh, Boston, up in Massachusetts. K through four elementary little babies, and I love them. What else am I supposed to say? No, you're good. You came all the way out of Wisconsin. To oh, I've been to Wisconsin. Friend. Yeah, you just finished on Friday. I did. So she just finished her year, and this year has been especially weird for you. I'm super proud of how you've done virtual learning because it's been bonkers. We've obviously been chatting because as a lot of you art teachers know, yeah. it's been super fun to, and challenging to connect with other art teachers because that's kind of, hi from Australia, um, that is from Sydney, yeah. Australia, kind of what like keeps us afloat, right? Is being able to yeah. like talk to an art teacher and be like, yo, is this really hard for you? Because it's hard for me. Mm -hmm. Or like, is this going well? How do you make that work sort of thing, right? So Caitlin and I have connected as I'm sure a lot of other art teachers have connected with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And so that's for sure part of, um, part of like what I, definitely got me through this year but yes. also you right yes. so you've been teaching virtually what else did you do this year tell us just a little bit about like what that looked like so you can stay strong so our year for most of it from the fall to April we had a hybrid situation so what I would do is I would drive my little self to school set up my computer a la like this and I would teach all day to the kiddos who are at home. Now, simultaneously, there's another group of children who are doing live learning in school, but I wasn't allowed to see them except maybe in the hallway. Yeah, we can do a little scoot. We're just, scooting. no, you're good. I'm just waving at all our friends. We'll wave. Yeah, Hi. Yeah, yeah. And what's fun is that we can be this close. I know, we're really, yeah. And we're vaccinated. This is the magic of science. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, it's, it's all good. We're good. <laughs> so, I did virtual. Um, and at first I was really, really afraid because I was like, I'm going to lose all my silly connections because yeah, yep. let's just leave it at that. Um, but I didn't. And I actually really got into it. I was just like, oh, I have to be larger than life. So every day it was, hello everyone, right in front of the camera. And this was my face all day. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is your face gets really numb. So after you get rid of the class you go <laughs> and that was my year and I actually fell into a really beautiful groove and my biggest fear of being able to make jokes and really connect with these kids on a personal level I thought that was going to completely disappear and it didn't well, especially and, with the virtual learning right and then everything got flipped upside down when they came back to school and what happened was there is my role shifted and the students everybody would come to school and then the specials would all be pre-recorded to be completed after school. And my role during the day would be to be a fitness break supervisor. So I would see kids live and tell them, you can play tag with a noodle, but don't hit the kids with the noodle. Just tap to tag. It was a lot. It was different. It was terrible. But it's well, fine because I got to see the children. <laughs> right. Well, and so what I'm hearing too is like you, you certainly embodied resilience because it was like, so you're already not in your classroom. You're already teaching the entire year virtually. But then on top of that, the end of the year, they're, you know, you're, everybody's done things that maybe we didn't sign up to do or want to do. But now you're like a fitness coach and not a coach in the art coach kind of way that you wanted to be, right? But like, so 
kind of reframing what you expected to happen where it was like, okay, now I gotta sort of supervise these kids. So anyway, so you just finished your year, you've been yeah. through like many different kinds of things that have happened this year, but also stepped into unexpected positions of like being a physical coach for students outside on their right. like snack breaks and whatever this year looked like. And like, we can be real, what I did lose in, as the fitness break instructor was these kiddos, when they come outside, they wanna play, they wanna just have fun. So having that one-on-one -on -one little bit in the smaller groups and in the controlled space of either your virtual classroom or the real classroom, that's not there. You just have 50 kids going, why do you have a water bottle so big? <laughs> And you're like, because I'm thirsty. <laughs> just so and so took my tennis ball. I'm sorry. Find another one. It's not. Give me a problem solver. Right. It's but it was mainly mostly that. Yeah. But for the end of the year. So. But there were amazing kiddos because um, who I had the this um, padlet that my uh, very best friend. Shout out to Michelle Parvin at Brown Art Room and uh, and Seppi and Jane and Bree. Those are my Natick colleagues. I love them and they're magical. And we all got through this year together. And so, shout out to the out, to them. I forgot <laughs> what I was saying. Out. What was I saying? Oh, 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 okay. The Padlet. Michelle Padlet. So she introduced me to that. So all the kiddos were able to upload their artwork and share it together. Mm. And they're able to like them. I didn't let them comment because I was too afraid. But now we have that to use next year. And I'm like, oh, I should have used that earlier in the year so we could have shared more. Because at the end, you're just like, let me see your artwork. And you see a teeny tiny one inch screen. And I go like this. And these wrinkles are real now because of this all year. <laughs> but that's okay. Right. So, I mean, it's basically like this entire year we've been learning. We've been adding things that we're going to continue. Yes. But also stuff that we're like, uh, this is not going to stay. And we don't want it to stay. Right. It's just not your liquid caffeine, but it's not, it's not going to happen. So basically today, and I've been talking to, with Caitlin for a long time and we talk all the time. I know there's a lot of people that connect with other art teachers, but something that I've always admired about Caitlin is your ability to just weave in your love of strength training. Don't be flexing up in here. Your love of- That wasn't <laughs> planned. <laughs> it wasn't. Your love of, of like talking about your students, like they're, like they're strong individuals and using that word talking about how they how they build their art muscles mm -hmm. how like tell us just more about how you use those analogies in your classroom and how do you because our whole theme today is getting staying strong right so what is how do you incorporate that into your classroom well it goes with the whole coach theme i'm like i call myself the art coach and we're all gonna build our art muscles and i say flex your art muscles and all these tiny little humans go Arr! and it's really important that i'm like get your neck really involved go Arr! and they're so <laughs> sweet about it and what that does is a hook for everyone because they know what a sort of what a muscle is and they're like oh i can be strong i want to be strong great so what i powerfully believe in is growth mindset you can't do it you can't do it yet mm -hmm. and what i want my art room to always be is a space to be a creative problem solver don't be afraid what is so and so doing but they're a draw no 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 it's about your practice your art practice and practice makes progress it does not make perfect we are not striving for perfection we are striving to try something new and being unafraid of failure because that's part of the learning game i want my students to be comfortable being uncomfortable because on the other side of that is where the most the most growth happens, right? So it's not always about the visual art of, you know, what have you. My passion lies in, again, is just being that creative problem solver. And being a creative problem solver through visual art, ooh, what a good hook. But if you can catch a bunch of students with, if you are finding space on the soccer field to zig and zag and find that ball, you are an artist. If you are a cook, if you are a baker designing that beautiful cake in your kitchen, you are an artist. If you're driving the streets of Boston, oh by golly, you are an artist, let me tell you. <laughs> Any Massachusetts friends, they really get that they joke. Get that. <laughs> but I mean, it's completely true. And also, I love that you also don't breathe when you talk because I just keep going and going and going. So this is probably why. I don't know friends. if I answered your question. No, I was just talking about get... how you infuse how you infuse yeah. strength into your classroom and showing your students that there's many ways to be an artist that growth mindset about knowing that you may not feel like you can do something now, but you will be able to do it eventually. So I don't feel like I can can do this to the best of my ability now, but not yet, right? And mm. knowing that there's always somewhere that we can grow. And that's the same as, you know, physically training our bodies or learning a sport or anything, you know what I mean? Anything you've and mentioned. it's a big hook for them. And yeah. I, like, my favorite superhero is Batman. I'm like, Batman is the most creative problem solver in the Justice League. He has no superpowers. He just invents. And he's rich. Well, that that's helps. what Ben Affleck said, but I didn't love that version of that movie. Kevin Conroy is the only Batman there is. Just <laughs> let's just be real right there. We have also a lot of opinions about that. For I sure. do.
We're not going to go there right now. Anyways, Batman's a really big problem solver, and that's a big hook for the kiddos. Because they're like, you like superheroes? And I'm like, uh, yes. Yes. I have many opinions about it, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so, okay, so strength is clearly a theme, right? Strength yes. is something you talk to your students about. Strength is something that you infuse into your classroom. But one of the reasons, too, that I always admire, like, the way that we talk about things, the way that other art teachers talk about things, is talking about, like, what can you do as an educator to make you feel strong? Because I don't know about y'all y'all in here, but I know we've had many chats this year, and this has been the hardest year that probably any of us have possibly had. It's so it's so difficult to persevere through something that feels like you're just jumping over hurdles the entire time. So can you tell us a few of the things that you found made you feel strong this year? Yes. Whether it be like connecting with your right, home right, life, right, right, your right. kitties, your like, you know, prioritizing your physical health, like what what things made it good for you? This, there's a lot because, but let's be real. To reach strength, you have to, you're gonna come from a point where you're. I don't want to say you're weak, but like strength is growth, right? Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of times when you don't feel strong and you cry in the car on the way to school or in the yep. shower or at the dinner table yep. or in bed and yep. all those places, right? Yep. And that was real this year. Mm -hmm. So there was many times this year where I was like, I can't do this. I feel terrible. I'm just the worst. They're feeling awful. But then they weren't. And a lot of the sources, and like I'm somebody who, I need some affirmation. Shout out to all the middle children in the roomish area who kind of need the spotlight sometimes to be like, good job there, buddy. I notice you, yeah. <laughs> I notice, I see you. Yeah. And when you're in a, on a computer with 24 kiddos and nobody's coming to visit your room and you're alone in your art room, that can be very lonely. So that need to feel seen or heard by someone, I want to first give a big shout out to the families of Natick because there was often someone in the background watching. And that's also a lot of pressure. When you're teaching in your art room, usually it's you and the children. And I don't mind being observed. I actually really like it when other adults vi uh, visit because then like my jokes just land even <laughs> they, harder. Yeah, they actually get it. And so to have a few people who were there, and if Debbie Jarvis, if you were watching this, I called you out right by name, and Lauren Punishment, and anybody else who I'm missing. There's so many moms who I want to like thank. you're giving a There's speech. Heather, and there's Joanne, and there's everyone who I forgot that I saw, and then the music plays. Anyways. <laughs> Elizabeth, Elizabeth Greer, anyway, I'm just something. like, I, anyways, all the native families, the notes that they took the time to write, that's where I would truly fall apart with gratitude because they're just like, we see you, we see you doing this performance and you are not alone and our kids are doing this after school and I know you don't see them, but they are loving this. So having that affirmation and that provided a lot of strength there mm -hmm. to be like, Oh, I'm not alone. And as someone who doesn't have a mama in their life, um, having all those mamas in my life, Oh, it gave you a teary. sense of, yeah. Oh yeah. Right. And then like on the like more like superficial sense, like snuggling with my baby kitties. I got three baby kitties and I know you've seen them pickles, Wim Hof and China baby the cat. And there's nothing wrong with that. And, uh, and baby the cat. There's nothing wrong with that. She's mm -hmm. so naughty. Anyways, the other parts of just, I like routine. And uh, in January, my husband and I went on this very strict fitness journey where we were working out three times a week. We were doing uh, lifting and we do yoga twice a week. We eat really well. We have this whole system down. We feel good. And like having that to look forward to and be like, okay, now I'm a fitness break instructor. That might not be the most exciting thing in the whole wide world, but oh, I'm not injured like I was this time last year. I have that strength back. And the kids actually watched me go from not being able to walk very well last year due to an injury um, to being stronger than ever now. And I talk about that very openly. Like, yeah, you, sometimes you get hurt. Sometimes you can't do something right away. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you want to chuck the pencil across the room, and that's okay. You're allowed, well, don't chuck it. Put it back in a spot. Let's be real. We want to be neat and tidy. <laughs> Oh, the kiddos know. Oh, yeah, I know. How do I like that pile, kids? Neat! They do. They know. They know. <laughs> they know. And it's fine. <laughs> but anyways, having... The, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore, but just no, that's, what, that's where I'm... And honestly, and let's, be, let's thank all the partners of all the art teachers out there. Yes. Who were able to be like, yeah, this is really hard. Or like, yeah, you're doing amazing. Or this is only temporary. Well, and that's, okay, so piggybacking off of that a little bit too, yeah. 
because as we know the bur yes you need the oxygen so that you can understand what you're saying <laughs> but like sometimes we go down rabbit holes and that's fine too but i think part of it is you you were able to step back and see what you can control you can't as much control your school environment because nope. you can't control the fact that you have to do virtual learning nope. and that you were transitioned to a physical uh what did you what do they call it Coach, where you're outside. Fitness break supervisor. Fitness break supervisor. But everyone did the best with what they I know. had in that moment. Absolutely. But yeah. you're saying, okay, well, those components of my life aren't necessarily what I had expected. A lot right. of us were taking that control out of our own yeah. hands and then saying, well, what can I control? Okay, well, you can control what your body does, how you, how active you are, whatever. And I think that's incredibly inspiring how much you for sleep. myself, too. Yeah, I'm not as much good with the routines, but you do inspire me to be. <laughs> so I think that's good. Because I'm like, wait, what? It's not okay to stay up until midnight? So um, I think... There's, but there's also something to be said about, you know, taking a moment to say, like, this is uncomfortable. Yeah. But if you get through it, just focus on these five minutes. And then the next five minutes. And then the next. And just be... Because you can't change what's already happened. And what's coming is going to come. It's going to happen. So it's this very yoga y. I never thought I'd be. I'm such a macho man, but I turned into a yogi. And that's fun too! <laughs> Shout out to Robin Hashway and Shauna Green. You Nobody's me. watching that, by the way. No, they These are all like my friends. <laughs> I have three. <laughs> Four. Four. Okay. Well, no, she was counted in the three. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I just counted my two yoga teachers, one of who's like, I don't know, she's not really my friend. Oh, but she's really, no, she's no, like, Robin. Like, yeah, no, you're good. Shauna's my teacher. <laughs> Sorry, this is, I don't know. Let's just delete and start over. <laughs> that's what I would do with a polo. I know you will. <laughs> but this oh, is live and this is real. Yes, because all these friends are here right now. So I know, I see everybody in the chat right now. We're going to try to rein it back in a little bit because we have a lot where we can go down rabbit holes. But what I really want you to take from Caitlin is the fact that she constantly instills strength in her students. No matter if you're virtual, no matter if you step in as a as a coach, whatever it might be, you're always prioritizing their strength and showing them that they can do they can do whatever they want. They just need to learn the processes to make it happen, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk just a little bit because I have a couple more topics I wanna talk with you about. One of them is just about this year in general has been full of hard stuff, yes. right? We've There's many art teachers that we talk to each other all the time. There's a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, on Instagram, on this social media community, and it's been hard, but there's also been some really good times. So can you just tell us a little bit of like, what has been successful and what do you feel like, maybe start with the challenge. What are some challenges that you felt like have been your main, like this was hard. You did kind of mention that relationship. We talked about all the challenges. You did talk about the relationship with students and then the, the okay, so we talked about the challenges. Oh, but also limited materials and teaching sure. to a crowd of kiddos who are at home in their own space being like, I don't wanna be here It's right really now. hard to keep that, that up. So that, what helped with that is that clearly I have a little bit of energy um, and that effervescence is for the kiddos. And when I turn off, I, I often would drive home in, in like quiet silence. Yeah. But what worked really well was, you know, doing the mantra every day mm -hmm. and having that routine still and just sort of sticking to a routine and keeping it as much like my room as I could. But with our materials, we'd be like, it's not paint and are we going to use these materials again? But more often than not, they didn't have any problem with what we were doing as long as I was like, guys, we're going to draw a picture of a cat. It's going to be amazing. Oh my goodness. If you show that level of excitement, they will follow. I mean, that's part of your excesses too, is that effervescent yeah. excitement yeah. and connecting with your students to say, listen, yeah. this may not be our favorite thing. I don't love that you have to do this at home and that right. we can't say, hey, give right. high fives in the way in the door. Right. But this is what we have. So let's see what our options are. Let's see how we can make it super awesome mm -hmm. and amazing. And then like, let's celebrate that stuff. Yeah. And I'm going to be excited. Like, that's part of the reason why, again, I don't know about y'all, but like there were days where I would, you know, message my partner and be like, listen, I'm going to come home. You better be ready to hug me on the floor because I'm just go home, come home and cry. And he's like, all right, sounds good. So that like, you just know it's a hard day, but you put all your energy and your love and your, mm -hmm. your commitment into trying to make that as best you can. So I think that is one of your successes for sure. Yeah. And I honestly, I was worried about the drawing because I'm not a big drawer. I don't have a big drawing background and I'm a little self-conscious about that. And this year we had to do a lot more guided work and I'm not used to doing that. Um, so what I had to learn right there in front of them. I was like, hey friends, we're all doing this together. But in that time I was like, oh, I invented, well, I didn't know if I invented it, but I discovered the eraser tracer trick. So that's just a fun way to trace your own lines 
without drawing something. Because you know, pencils and they erase and then they hate it and they want to get a new paper. Anyways, the eraser, draw your line with your eraser first, flip your pencil and trace it. That was something that I'll take away. And a mom recently reached out and was like, I just discovered the magic of the eraser tracer trick. Oh my goodness. And I'm like, yes. And her son is the one who taught her that. Yeah. When there's a success, if anybody ever taught their um, younger sibling who wasn't at school, that was a moment I was like, there it is. So I was confident that I was reaching them. Honestly, teaching virtually, I felt like I thrived. I was thriving after a while. I mean, you kind of as much. I need you. Gotta love that mute button. We're gonna miss that next year. Let me tell you. <laughs> but the other thing that was a huge success is I have a very large inventory on my YouTube channel now. So if anybody needs extra help with something or they need to replay something that I've done on the screen, they have that resource. If a substitute is necessary, if I'm feeling like a garbage bag and like, guys, I just can't take charge. Let's just do this today. Or like, cause you know, when you lose your voice, that's what you sound like. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I know. You got that. Yeah. <laughs> right. But this year I didn't, well, surprisingly I didn't lose my voice, but. Shocking. Cause you're probably talking more. Close. And you're screaming into the computer. I would break a sweat. Oh yeah. Talking to the. You close the <laughs> computer. Just, just like, it's a different kind <sighs> of tired. Oh, yeah. It's a very, you're exhausted. Yeah. For sure. But you know. Yeah. Yeah. But and so these kiddos, and I got to teach some new things to friends who I never thought I was like, oh, okay. This is cool. And like looking, what was really helpful for me was looking at different artists. I'm really into digital um, illustrations right now. So just finding and redesigning my Instagram feed to find just artists, 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 just new people and different styles of drawing that I could emulate that the kiddos would find super engaging. Mm -hmm. Cause this year I was like, yes, we're, we still gotta get the elements and principles in there and the artists inspiration. But I was like, I just need them to be hooked. I want them to have fun and remember that they love creating. They are creative problem solvers and visual art is the place where you can be safe and know that we're, we've got your back and you can do it all. That's what it's all about, right? Mm -hmm. Is giving them that space to feel creative and that it they is. can do those things. Yeah. Speaking of the redesigning your Instagram feed, there, um, Caitlin did write a few articles for the Art of Ed, so after this I'm gonna post up a couple of swipe ups so you guys can check that out. She has one in there about that. Some other ones about like bringing in masters versus new modern artists. So there's some fun topics that I'll be sure to link up so you guys can follow some of Caitlin's articles. Um, and then, Speaking of fun stuff with AWU, we do have our summer conference coming up and I know you're doing a presentation for that, so I gotta ask, what is that gonna be on? And who in the chat here is gonna be joining us for the summer conference? I hope all of them. I hope that, because the conferences are amazing. I'm going to be giving a presentation on weaving. Do tell. Specifically what? To give us a little hint into like, you gotta give us just a little bit of a preview, what makes the way you teach weaving uh, special in your classroom or something that you you continue the tradition of I use number codes to create patterns and it's open we open tapestry weaving on either side which means they have those rough beautiful edges which I love mm -hmm. and so you get a little bit of left brain right brain go going on there and Oh, it's just, it's the highlight of second year. That's probably the project I'm, I mean, there's so many projects, but of second grade specifically, that's the one I missed doing most this year, but I get them as third graders. And we can just adjust. I mean, if nothing, we are flexible, yes. right? That is one of the things. So I know you always add, we are strong to the mantra too, but this year we added, we are flexible and they love doing this cool dance move, right. but we added, we are flexible to our mantra because so much of this year was unexpected. They had to be resilient. They had to do things. You know, our students were expected to just fly by the seat of their pants in a way yeah. that they never had before. And the teachers in addition. And so reminding us, we just have to be flexible and that's okay. And it's making us strong, right? Yeah. And there were times where I overloaded my plate completely and then I fell apart brutally. Mind you, all the smiles and the fun, I can say that now in hindsight because I'm out of the garbage, mm -hmm. but when you're in the garbage dumpster fire, it's, it's, it's hard. hard. Yep. <laughs> and sometimes you're just like, I don't know how many weeks this is going to last, I just, it, but it's not going to last forever, and you just have to tell yourself that and do yourself a favor and say no sometimes if you need to, and just be comfortable saying I need to take a step back for me, and that's okay. And there's no shame in that, although you might feel it like you're letting someone down, but at the end of the day, we're all human, unless you're not, which is cool. Sure. Let, let us know, because that would be cool. Yeah, we need some robots or something. Well, yeah, I yeah. would love to know a robot. But then you have to finish the thought. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny?
funny is before this, we were talking about the fact that so much has changed in our brains this year that I feel like I, like, I don't know about any of you guys or you people in the chat here, but sometimes you're just literally in the middle of the sentence and then you're like, and it's gone. It disappeared into thin air. So that's hopefully something that we will get back. Ah, yes. FL Art Life. Miss the mantra. What is it? Oh. Should we do it? To, well, yours is a little different than I'm mine. I'm a little different, but so she did teach me that the reason I found her is because I recognized her at the NAE conference two years ago. That's our meet cute. She was... It, <laughs> that's what it is! <laughs> she was walking down the hallway, and I saw her, and I just was like, well, here we go. Art Room Glitter Fairy! And I just yelled it, <laughs> and then she opened her arms and went... <laughs> and we hugged, and we didn't meet... Till two years later. Yeah. <laughs> Here we this are. This is the magic of social media. But it is. So but for the, I went to her presentation, the presentation about the mantra piece, and I brought this into my classroom and adapted it a little bit, and it goes like this. I told I'll be the your kids. Oh, you will be? Okay, yeah. so. And what's great is that now when I walk into the classroom, I don't have to say anything. They all just get into crisscross applesauce, hands on knees, because I get real low with it. Deep breath in through your nose. Let it go. And repeat after me. I am amazing. I am amazing. I am mindful. I am mindful. I am creative. I am creative. I am strong. I am strong. I am an artist. I am an artist. And one more really big deep breath in. Let it go. Do you think people would come to a yoga class with us? If I use my young, my young, young my low yoga, yoga voice. voice. Yeah. So my, <laughs> mine is a little bit different. And I can link up to the article about the yeah. mantra as well, too. Um, mine just starts with my mantra. Then I'm positive, creative, mindful, amazing, and an artist. And we always encourage kids to add their own self-affirmations, too. I have a bunch of ideas this year about what I want to add about being aware. That is a huge part of the SEL podcast, which I am Excited to tell you I'm going to have Jonathan Jurevich on for an IG Live soon. And if you have not already listened to the SEL podcast, I am, am not even in that many podcast episodes. And it is so good. The Art of SEL. So one of the um, recent podcasts that was released by The Art of Ed. So you want to check that out too. It's a Guy Raz lookout. Yeah. <laughs> and so the mantra is a huge part of that because we're teaching kids to be self-aware, self-affirming, -aff mm -hmm. and trying to understand what do they need, how can they see what's happening around them, and kind of um, notice how to prepare themselves for the yeah. day. So the mantra is a huge part of that, and they I think... bring it home. Yeah. They teach their siblings. I have some students who, like, their parents will email and be like, my kiddo wrote the mantra and put it above their bed and they say it every night before bed. And I'm just how like, how powerful, <laughs> how powerful <laughs> right. to give them, to give them the tools to understand that they have even just saying a, a mantra that starts with, I am mm -hmm. all of a sudden they're in charge. Now, yeah. Right. Out, yeah. If you have a, like not to, to knock any like be kind signs, right. Of or whatever. Course. But like, if you say be as a command, that can still be wonderful for a student, but mm -hmm. giving them the power to say something that's I am mm -hmm. in their own voice, yep. in their own control yep. is a beautiful thing. It so, beautiful thing. Um, so that's something we'll definitely share there too. So we're going to share a mantra, we're going to share a couple of your articles after this. And then um, I also, and then we'll also share a link to the Art Ed Now conference so that anybody that is looking forward to the summer conference, it's going to be great, um, it can go and check that out a little bit more too since definitely. Caitlin will be presenting there along with many others. Yes. So we're going to wrap it up a little bit, but I am just curious curious if you can give us we always end with um what kind of words of advice or encouragement do you have as we move forward so this year has been a lot you just finished your school year three days ago then came immediately to wisconsin to I see did. me so then <laughs> what encouragement do you have for us school related non-school related human related robot related tell us so many sorry i did do a bad job phrasing that because then you get distracted um this summer, I'd say, do what you need to do for you. Sm find things that make you smile. Get out into the fresh air. Lift heavy weights and do yoga. Um. <laughs> Might be rubbing off a little I, bit on this A little one. bit, just a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm, ch I'm trying to think, honestly, one day at a time. And we cannot predict what's coming but hopefully it won't be as challenging as last year because no matter what, we've all grown somewhere. And I haven't been back in my classroom with real people since last March. So there is this like, ooh, am I going to know what to do? do it? Yeah. But the answer is, yeah. 
Yeah. It's that same because summer feeling. It's just that you've had that summer feel. You know how, like, two days before school starts, you're, like, you, you're kind of like, I think I forgot how to teach. Right. What do I do? Right. But then it comes back. It, may, it will. And that will come back for mm. you, too. It's just that you've had an extended period of time because you've been virtual teaching and all these other things. So And looking forward to their excitement, but really write down something that you did really well this year or just say it out loud and give yourself a pat on the back the kiddos i was like give yourself a pat on the back give yourself a round of applause when we go around and around and around, around, around give yourself a hug give your brain a hug well, <clears throat> brain would be more of like a hair fluff well that's you that is me but i don't know i mean words of wisdom what is wisdom what are words <laughs> okay fine so make time for yourself and try to prioritize like well, self-care, another good one. Jonathan Jervich has an article about self-regulation versus self-care. So yeah. along those SEL lines too, is saying it doesn't just have to be like, oh, I'm going to put a face mask on, but how do I kind of understand how I feel and what can I do to take ownership over that a little yeah, bit, and right? I always like to give the term of like, give yourself grace mm -hmm. because there were some things that we got better at and there were some things that we lost, but there's so many fun things to look forward to, like painting, over everything <laughs> and just being able to see those wows again that's what i'm looking forward to excitement most yeah just you can't them, hear it because they are gonna be real excited to be back and that's what i'm looking forward to most because little children are like my energy source absolutely They're my fuel absolutely and as they should be so thank you to everybody who joined we are gonna link up a couple of things just some articles some um, yes. things that I mentioned you will help me remember obviously right. was I supposed to give a question we're gonna do the question no, no, no. was I supposed to give my handle oh yeah how can we they follow you I am at art with coach T I'll share that too but or yes or on YouTube I am Caitlin Thompson dash art with coach T yeah I have a website I guess art with coach T.com if you want there you go. Nailed it. I'll link up those things too. So if you guys want to follow more about Caitlin, you can follow her there. She's great at messaging and just kind of being part of this art teacher community because it's very helpful to have each other, especially when, you know, we know things will be different next year. Hopefully different things that we've learned that can make it a positive experience, yep. but it's nice to have those people to say, listen, I got you. I'm going to fly to Wisconsin. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, and, and I'll kind of help support you because that's what it's all about. Ooh, yes. So before we go, as always, I end with a question. Make it look extra sparkly. Good. Yes. So to get your hands on one of these rainbow holographic stickers, I'm going to ask a trivia question. And the first person that answers the trivia question correctly, you can DM the Art of Ed. Um, just send us a message and say, hey, I won the sticker. And then just send me your address and I'll pop it in the mail for you. So the question is about Caitlin. If you were listening, how many cats does Caitlin have? We have to give them 10 seconds because there's actually there might not be a leg because uh, whatever. How many cats does Caitlin have? Please type it in the chat if you want one of these really cool stickers. How many cats does Caitlin have? Three! Whip it! There she is. Yeah! Oh, you're getting them. <laughs> oh, y'all are so good. Oh my gosh, you guys, I wish I could give you a sticker. Okay, Whip Brit, please send um, a message to the Art of Ed, and I will take your address, and then I will send you a really cool sticker. Thank you all for joining. I'm going to save this to IGTV so that you guys can join or watch it later, share it, all that fun stuff. And then we will see you next week, Monday, for another chat. Thank you for joining, Caitlin. Thank you and for, for being my in-person friend. This is the first. The f I look very tall right now, but I'm just I not know. a high We're chair. actually the same height. Kind of, yeah. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for joining so much. I will be linking a bunch of fun things that you guys can follow along with, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.